Hi, and welcome to my session, Monitoring Tweaks to Suppress False Alerts. My name is Jan Peterson, and I'm a system specialist at UMU University. We're located in the northern part of Sweden. You see the blue dot here. And we have uh, around 40,000 students. Most of them are distance students. So they don't run our online platforms for the studies. And then we have around 15,000, 20,000 on campus. We have uh, 5,000 employees. And in our environment, we have around 1,500 plus servers, which 350 of them have a SCUM agent on them. Our main platform is run on VMware as a hypervisor solution. And then we have a couple of, of uh, physical servers as well. Uh, we, here in NUMI, we're on the student result system. It's called LADOC for the main part of all Sweden. This is where the results registers for all students that study on the universities in Sweden. Uh, for the other servers that doesn't have a, a SCOM agent, we run Nagios for the Linux systems at the moment. So what can cause the false alerts? Well, to quote the 1600th century poet Steve Vollmer, developers, developers, developers. Uh, often alerts come from developers publishing a site or something or doing a deployment or something. So something restarts and then you get an alert. Uh, and also, you see my colleague Michael here on the right picture. We do also do bad stuff, of course, when we do our deployments. Maybe we restart a service or something, and then you get an alert. Or you just think, oh, I just set up this and then nothing, no one will notice. But SCOM might notice. And also the software companies are a bit trigger happy. For example, Microsoft in the setup you have out of the box on most maintenance pack and also Veeam. There are quite uh, trigger happy. So they give an alert when they shouldn't. The levels are set too high or too low. So we get an alert. We have, uh, for example, adjusted uh, the alert for DNS lookups a couple of times on the DNS management pack because they're quite low. So here's an example, the soon in production. Here we have a developer who just to want to be prepared like a Boy Scout. He sets up a, a website for the new web he's going to deploy next week. And he creates the application pool, he creates the website and everything. And since this is a production server, we have monitoring on it. And uh, SCOM will identify everything on it, all websites and alert if there's something wrong with them. So what would happen in this case when the developer leaves the site shut down? Well, you will get an alert. And in this case, it shouldn't alert because this stage, uh, uh, this site isn't up and running yet. So it shouldn't alert on it. It should only alert when it goes into production. 
but since the developer wants to pre-stage and prepare so you can quickly switch from the old version to the new version, he wants to be prepared. And there's another cause of alert. The I'm not ready to delete this just yet. I pause it, I set it offline or something. In this case, uh, one of my colleagues gets an order to, well, we shut down this site. Uh, can you remove the site and the database and uh, delete it? Well, since my colleague has been around for a couple of years, he knows that if I delete this, it would go maybe one, maybe two weeks. And then I will get a horde of, of emails saying, I can't access that database. Where is it? It's gone. I need it. All my research was on that database. And then he has to restore the database from backup. And uh, he needs to set up all the websites and application pool and everything just to get it back. So the quick fix here is to just set the database offline. Then everyone who wants to access it will get an error that he can't access it. And if someone needs it, he just can set it online again and everyone is happy. But Scrum isn't happy. An offline database on a server, not good. Scum will scream. And this one, I don't know if you've seen this movie, The Cleaner with Samuel L. Jackson. He cleans up on crime scenes. Uh, we have a lot of research databases. And in some of those databases, there are information that they don't want to share with other people. But some of the data in that database, they might want to share with other people. So what will they do to do the sharing then? Well, they have the production SQL instance. that's called something, maybe MS SQL server. And then they have the another instance, they call, for example, cleaning. And then they do a setup where they take a, a backup of the database and they restore it, the production database, that is, take a backup of that one and then restore it to the cleaning instance. And then they remove all the information that they don't want this other researcher or whoever it may be to access. So they remove all the critical data. The problem with this one is that this cleaning instance isn't running all the time. It's only running when you want to do the cleaning before they sh ship the information to the other person. So SCOM will then and then find this instance and then alert that it's not running. And if it's running a long time, it will find both the instance and the database that's what's on the instance. And it will alert that it can't get the information from that database. The result of all of those examples is this, the red dot. And uh, I don't know how many red dots you have in your SCUM environment. I think I have around 40 right now. Most of them are from certificates that expires soon. We have uh, a lot of uh, systems that need uh, certificates from the hospital side and their procedure from getting the certificates are quite uh, long. You don't just send in the CSR and then you get the certificate. Here you have to go with the USB key 
to someone and sign a paper and then leave over the, the key and then wait a couple of days and then go back and fetch it with an ID card and so on. So that's the, the main reason we have a lot of alerts, but also the examples I said before. So how do we fix this? Well, we have set up this solution. We use a dynamic group in which we include the objects that we don't want an alert on. And then we disable monitors and or discoveries for that group. So time to demo that. Here we have my setup and here we see the next gen site that's not running. And we also see the cleaning instance that SCUM says is unhealthy. And it also complains about the discovery error on the same instance. So the next gen site there, site unavailable. The first thing we have to do is to distinct this objects from the others. So we know which one we don't want to monitor. And we have done this by before the site goes into the production, we add a little suffix on the site name. And here we use the Swedish word avstängd. Here you will get uh, Swedish lesson A in Swedish for beginners. Uh, avstängd means shut down. I do like that. And we can do the same. The application pool in this case is already running, but if it was stopped, we could rename that as well to get it into the same. So, and, and then we go to SCUM. And then we create a new group. I name it a disabled websites. Put that into the A schematon management pack. Here we could uh, either pinpoint explicit group members if we want to do that. Uh, that could be the case if we we don't have any distinction on why it shouldn't alert on this object on this production server. Uh, the disadvantage of using the explicit group members is, as you know, of course, that you have to manage removal or adding yourself. Instead, we go to the dynamic inclusion rules. We create a rule. And here we need to find the IAS 10 website, since this is an IAS 10, and we add that. And we set this filter, the display name contains, and then I ask you write A, B, T, the beginning of Avstengd, because I'm not sure how SCUM will like the Swedish character set here. And then we can also add in the same filter, we add EIS application pool. 
where we will set the display name contains offset. And then we have the or group, any of this is true. It's a IS10 website and the display name contains offset or it's a application pool and it contains offset. Like that, no subgroup. I can include and exclude members if you would like to and then click create. And then wait, we'll take a sip of coffee. It's early in the morning. And the spinning donut goes on. Uh, one thing to mention here, if you have uh, other, if you want to include, for example, if you don't have only IS10 websites, you have to include all of those objects, IS8, 9, and so on, if you want to include those. There we go, we have that. And then we go to monitors. And then we have the IS10 website here. And availability. And we have the application pool. And the availability there as well. And then we make an override on that monitor for a group. And then we have our group just created. A, disable website and application pools. And we click OK. And we sent this to generate an alert false. Because we, we might want to, to see if the website is up and running with the, the color code and so. When we see it in the displays, we see that this one is disabled, but it's not alerting. So we could do that instead, enabled false. Then it will just go white, but if we do this one instead. Generates an alert, false. Okay. And now we can go back to the groups here. And we can check this to see if it worked. View group members for that site here. Okay, it hasn't showed up yet. Uh, since the, the, the discovery cycle for the site, you have uh, two things that depends on when it will show up in the group. First, SCOM has to do an inventory of the IS website and find a new name. And then SCOM will have to calculate the group membership of this group as well. And that will take a, uh, a time. We can go back later and see if it has found it. What we can do to speed up this one is to, to change the discovery interval for the IS website. And you can see here it runs. Here you can change the discovery. Well, then we might want to handle this one as well, the cleaning. And we do the same approach here. Create a new group. A disabled SQL in instances. We put that into the A schematon as well. Oh, I clicked a bit fast, fast here. And then here, dynamic 
inclusion rules. We go to scale on Windows, DB engine. And this plane name, I can do contains here, even if the name is cleaning. Do like that. And here you have a bit tricky if you don't have this distinction on the names, then you might have to to do the explicit members to exclude them. We see here, object is MSQL on MSQL on Windows DB Engine, and this plane name contains cleaning. There we go. And then we save that one. And we wait again. This one should be calculated almost instantly. And we get back to that later. You can adjust the group calculation. Kevin Holman has a, a, a blog post on that one. So you can take a look at the, his page about that. It's a register value. And then we see the group members here. And here cleaning showed up instantly. So here we want to do two things with this one. First, we want to disable the monitor for DB Engine health status for a group and disabled SQL instances. Enabled, false. And I don't think it's anything here more on this one. And then we go to discoveries. <clears throat> And we close these ones. And here we want to target the discovery for the database instead of the engine, because the engine has already been discovered since it's found the database engine, but we have to disable the discovery for the databases on that engine. And here we go, disable object discovery for MS SQL on Windows, discover SQL server database for a group and disable SQL instances. Disabled, false, uh, enabled, false. And if we do, you can check it here. This is the target for this discovery. And as you can see, the cleaning shows up here. So we just targeted the group instead because that contains everything. And there we have it. We can go back and check. I don't think this one has been discovered yet. It will take. No, not yet. So as we can see, the alert for the cleaning instance has been closed. Another one we have an issue with is this one, backup that has started. Here we can see the Wii management pack. 
complaining about data store latency analysis. And if you see the timestamp, you see it's after, and this is in in 24 hour clock, so it's 7 p.m. The database has started. Oh, the, the backup has started, I mean. And when it do that, there will be a lot of latency on the on the loons and so on. So it will alert. And this is alerting we don't care about really, because we know there will be latency when the backup runs. And how can we fix that? We want the alert to go out when there's a production time, but after hours, we don't want it. Well, back in the days, we used this script. We took the management bank, created a nightly VMware overrides, and we got the group, Veeam Virtual Machine Group. And then we took the monitor, in this case, Virtual Machine Storage, storage Latency. And we put Disable SCAR Monitor on that monitor during a certain time. Here we used uh, uh, a regular scheduled task where we run this at 7 p.m. To disable it and then in the morning uh, before everyone starts to work we reversed it we removed this one this is um, not the optimal way to do it but back in the days there were no other way to do it but i know of a company that's behind this uh, scamaton that has done a excellent product that's called EasyTune. And that one helps out with, with this problem. I will go back to my SCOM server here. Okay, here we go. And if we go to administration here, I have installed the Easy Tune management pack from Cookdown. And by default, you will get from their community store, you will get a couple of tuning packs that are prepared for doing tuning in different levels. For example, you can set up uh, discovery only, or you can set up uh, just basic monitoring or advanced monitoring or so on. These tuning packs have been created by experts from around the globe, but in this case, we'll create our own. And uh, then I go to this, create tuning pack. A custom tuning pack. And I will have to select a management pack for this. And then I go to this one. This is the one I want to create a tuning on. We in virtual extension, we in wire monitoring. And I click next. And then I just create a name for it, we tuning pack, author MIP, and uh, where I want to store it. I have set up a custom store, that's just a folder on the server. And then I can select here to open the CSV file that it creates after I've finished this. And I want to open that and edit it. I click create. And then let's open this. And 
here we have a label here that's called custom and that's for the custom monitoring. And uh, in this case, I want to rename that custom to nightly override. And, and then I have to find it's easier to do this in Excel, for example, so you can find this quicker and know which column you're editing as well. But I do it in Notepad this one. And then I search for these latency monitors. And here I have one, vSphere host kernel latency analysis. And this would alert when it's doing the backup. And here I select false. That's the override value for that one. And it's still a kernel latency. Uh, move on. Still a kernel. And here's the vSphere virtual machine storage latest analysis. This is for the VMware machine. And generates an alert we have here as well. And we set the override on that one to false. And let's see if we had another one. Here's the last one, the data store latency. And we have the same here, generates an alert. Default is true, override false. And then save that one. There we go. And then we do, we'll do a tuning on this one. Here's the tricky part is that we don't have a group that includes all these objects. So you might have to create a new group and include all the targeted objects. We just will We'll just do this on the virtual machine one now, but you can do a group that includes all of those. I will tune a group and target a group. I write VMware and it will find the VMware virtual machine group then this override will target all virtual machines on VMware. Tuning level. Oh, I forgot one thing now. You see it says custom here. First rule of Fight Club, don't talk about Fight Club. Cancel, I have to refresh. So it finds the new overrides I created. And tune the group again. And we'll find the virtual machine group again. Tuning level. And now we have the nightly override here. And here we can see the overrides we're done. Kernel latency, storage latency, and data store generates an alert. Override, false. And here is the magic button. Apply the tuning on a schedule. And here we can say that we only want this tuning to apply outside of the schedule. So we set it to start at, it should disable at 8 a.m. and enable at 7 p.m. And 
we could disable it on work hours, work hours on weekends as well. Here you could adjust this schedule as you, you would like for the, your purposes. And then it wants to create a management pack to store this overrides in, or you can choose a one you already have. And here it will create a Weem tuning pack overrides. And we click finish. Fresh. This can be applied on everything you want to, to tune or disable during off hours. There's quite a lot of alerts that only show up during night when the backups run or service reboots and so on. So it could be very useful to do this tuning during nighttime and disable monitor and so on so it won't get false alerts. I don't how, know how many of you that have uh, alerts that go out to a beeper or, oh, yeah, I'm quite old beeper, SMS, I guess, or Teams channel or something. During night, we only have alerts going out during daytime and early evening. So we only act on alerts that happen then and only in, in certain cases. So to minimize the false alerts, we do these overrides during night. And there we go. We created the tuning pack with an override for that one. And as I said, you have here customer created community packs. And you can see here, for example, if I tune this for a group, Oh, I don't have that one installed, so there are different levels for those that has been created to, to be useful and to only monitor and alert on the things you want. I'm using the free version of the tuning pack, so you can only do five tunings on this one, uh, but you can buy the Pro version, and we get unlimited tuning. Uh, other tools that are very useful are the also from Cooktown, but uh, from Tao Yang in the beginning, the self maintenance and management pack that also is very useful for handling these false alerts and so on. One quite useful thing we have used in this one is the, the managing of rules where you can set up that the self-maintenance pack closes rules after a certain time because rules don't self-close. And you also have the override create tool by Boris. It's the prequel to Cooktown Easy Tune, I would say, where you also can create overrides from that one. I think Kevin Holman has a, a link to that one on his page. Uh, one thing I also want to talk about is monitoring levels. And uh, we have used MP Offer and then we create a discovery via the author and we look at the registry key and there we have a monitoring level and we set it to one, two, uh, or zero, one, two. And if the computer has a zero, we won't monitor anything. It will just show up as an agent in SCOM. Nothing will be discovered and nothing will be monitored. And if it's a, a one, 
we have set up baseline monitoring. Here we disable everything but the basics. We monitor um, disk space, CPU usage, and uh, certificates. Because we found out that if we disable certificates, things might break. And we won't want to know that even if we just have the baseline monitoring on that one. And then if we set it to, it's full blown monitoring. You can create more of those if you would like to. And uh, then we create the MP offer classes for all of those. And then we enable and disable monitoring based on the level. Here's an example then. We have the red steer here where we create the monitoring level key and level one. And we created a class discovery that says monitoring level one if this key is one. And then you will create, oh, we'll go back. Then you will create a group that includes only objects in this class and then create overrides on that one. This is the one I talked about from Kevin Holman, the group calculation polling interval in milliseconds. Kevin suggests that you should change that so it doesn't populate the group that often because it uh, takes quite a bit of CPU usage from the server. So you can change that. But if you want quicker interval, you can change that one. With that, uh, I would like to say thank you. Hope you enjoyed my session. I will be in the channel answering your questions or in the meet the speaker. Bye-bye.